Instead of doing uh, best movies of the year, I decided let's simplify this and do the top five best superhero movies or comic book movies, however we want to categorize it, of 2021. This was a lot easier for me to break down and put a list together. So let's start the list off with number five, Black Widow. I know not everybody loved Black Widow. I know some people were disappointed by it, or some people thought it was too little, too late for a character like Natasha Romanoff, Scarlett Johansson, getting a solo movie. It, it comes after her death in Avengers Endgame. But I'm somebody who tries to look at the bright side, and I try to think of it in the sense of, yes, it would have been nice in a perfect world to have had her movie years ago. But at least we got it. At least if this is the last time she plays this character, it was in her own film and it had ties to her origins in the Red Room, a story that I very much have been wanting to see for a long time. I loved the introduction of her sister, Yelena Belova, played by Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh has already been introduced to my life with a bunch of other films before this, but this was a big introduction for a mass Marvel superhero audience. Sure, Taskmaster might not have been used to the character's fullest potential, but it was still cool, the few scenes that we got with him. Number four, Shang-Chi and the Legends of the Ten Rings. This is a movie that I was very happy that Marvel finally got around to as far as the diversity standpoint and as far as what they did right by the character and his backstory. And so I, I was curious how they would pull this off. I was curious how much of his culture they would bring forth into this movie and they very much did so. I thought Simu Liu was great. His friendship with Aquafina, I thought was great. His relationship with his sister was heartbreaking. And also, I can't wait to see where that goes next. The relationship with him and his father, the Mandarin. I love that we finally did the Mandarin justice. I have been shouting for years how disappointed I was with the portrayal of the Mandarin in Iron Man 3. And this helps. This does. This helps me now look back and say, all right, at least we got it. At least we got a version of the Mandarin that full, fully lives up to what I have wanted to see on screen. I thought this film had some of the best martial arts fighting that we've seen in a Marvel film. Sure, the end, big over the top CGI dragon battle at the end might not been have my favorite part of the film, but it still was enjoyable. Overall, the movie is still a lot of fun. At number three, Eternals. Again, another Marvel film. I know Marvel is dominating this list and they probably will still continue to do so. But Eternals, another controversial film because some people found it to be boring or too long or not enough action, not enough fanfare, not enough fun that they come to expect. And I appreciated that, though. I appreciated that it was different. It was kind of a different change of pace. It, it did take its time to get into these characters and the world that they come from and uh, the history of the thousands of years that they've been around. It was a huge ensemble cast, and so we had a lot of characters that we had to go through and introduce. I thought you had some great actors in here. I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying that every character was as interesting as the next, but I think enough of it was interesting, especially with the Celestials. You know that that has to play into bigger uh, coming stories in the future. And those post credit scenes, I'm still scratching my head over as far as where they're going to lead to next. At number two, The Suicide Squad. Finally, a DC film gets on this list. Not a lot of DC movies this past year, admittedly, but this film was great. It's directed by James Gunn, who's, yeah, he comes from the Marvel world, so there you go. 
but he had a great change of pace from the previous Suicide Squad movie. The humor in this film was great. The rated R in this, the violence, uh, the the way how they told the story, uh, the back and forth, the ensemble cast. I thought James Gunn brought so much of his flavor to the DC world, and we used some of the most obscure characters that I still to this day can't believe that i'm seeing in a live action film uh also you have aegis elba you have john cena you have king shark rat catcher number two polka dot man i cannot believe that we saw the suicide squad fight starro <laughs> this happened i saw this in my lifetime starro i it just it blows my mind being a big comic book geek growing up being aware of these characters, and now I'm seeing it. I am. It, it feels like now you have these movies being made by people who they too grew up on this type of stuff, or they care as much about this stuff as I do. This is a film that I've watched at least three or four times because it was on HBO Max, and so I've laughed and I've enjoyed it each and every single time. It's a wild ride. But for my number one favorite superhero comic book movie of 2021, yeah, it was Spider-Man No Way Home. Is it that much of a surprise? Come on, people. Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm just glad that it lived up to the hype because I was so hyped for this film. I was so anxious. I was so in the mode of this movie better deliver. That I started to psych myself out and think, holy crap, what if it doesn't deliver? What if this movie isn't that good? We all know the rules of trilogies. The third one hardly ever lives up to that hype. Hardly ever closes out the chapter the way that we want. The way that we have our ideas and expectations. But somehow, still, this film exceeded those expectations. I did have a checkbox of things that I wanted to see, that I need to see, that I hoped to see in this film. And this movie did that, and it also added stuff to the list that I didn't previously have, because I said, wow, yes, you guys are right, I did want that. I just didn't realize I wanted that until you're giving it to me. So much goodness going on here between the old villains coming back and so much fan service stuff, but in the best of ways possible. If this is the end of Tom Holland as Spider-Man, I think he went out with a bang. I think you can't leave a franchise on a higher note, but it's also good because we're all yearning for more. We all want to see more of him in any of a Spider-Man movie that we can get. So guys... Let me know in the comments below what were some of your favorite superhero movies, comic book movies of 2021. What do you think of my list? What would you add? What would you take out? Thanks for watching. Hit that notification bell for more videos coming soon. Like, comment, subscribe. Later!